Welcome to Kini News. I'm your host, Camilia. UMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has commented on the claims made by Pasir Salak MP Tajuddin Abdurrahman yesterday. UMNO President Ahmad Zahid Hamidi has claimed to be in the dark about an alleged plot to oust him, allegedly involving his deputy Mohammad Hassan and his predecessor Najib Abdul Razak. <laughs> Jadi uh, kita mesti menghormati pelbagai hati iaitu jika seseorang itu dipilih oleh perwakilan maka jika sesuatu permintaan itu mahu dilakukan ianya itu ada peraturan hati yang memboleh atau tidak membolehkan seseorang itu berada di satu jawatan. Zahid said this in response to the allegations made by Pasir Salak MP Tajuddin Abdul Rahman yesterday. Tajuddin claimed that in May 2020, a group of senior and influential leaders in AMNO gathered to broker a deal for Zahid to step down as party president. However, he said the plan failed after Mohammad and Najib backed out. Meanwhile, when quizzed on whether Tajuddin would be facing disciplinary action, the AMNO president said the party will follow due process. Still on Zahid, Ahmad Maslan has come to the UMNO president's defense and listed several party achievements under his presidency. UMNO Secretary General Ahmad Maslan has come to the defense of his party president, Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. In a post on Twitter this morning, Ahmad shared a screenshot of a message for party members and supporters. He said in a struggle, what is most important are the results and listed a number of AMNO's achievements under Zahid's presidency so far. This included their victory in seven by-elections, landslide wins in the Malacca and Johor Snap polls, managing to get AMNO Vice President Ismail Sabri Yaakob installed as the Prime Minister, as well as confirming Ismail Sabri as their Prime Minister candidate for the next general election. He added that hopefully the team led by the President and assisted by the AMNO Deputy President and Supreme Council members will successfully bring AMNO and BN to win Malaysia again, with a two-thirds victory for the benefit of the Rakyat. His statement came following allegations by Pasir Salak MP Tajuddin Abdul Rahman in a press conference yesterday. Tajuddin had branded Zahid as a liability to AMNO and warned that the party will lose the general election if Zahid remains as the party president. Meanwhile, on the opposition side, a PKR leader said Tajuddin's revelations have proven that Anwar did not lie about having majority support in 2020. The revelation by former AMNO Supreme Council member Tajuddin Abdul Rahman yesterday is proof that PKR President Anwar Ibrahim had strong and convincing support to be Prime Minister in 2020. This is according to PKR Information Chief Shamsul Iskandar Mat Akin. Shamsul said that Tajuddin's statement also validated Harapan's initiative to restore the people's mandate from the 2018 general election, which was betrayed through the Sheraton move. He said it showed that betrayal and personal agendas was what had thwarted their efforts to recapture Putrajaya. With this, he said the ridicule Anwar faced from those who claimed that he was lying about having strong and convincing support had been answered. Shamsul added that naturally they cannot compromise with those who have been accused and convicted in court of corrupt practices, and the law must be allowed to take its course. In his press conference yesterday, Tajuddin claimed that he was a living witness, that statutory declarations had been signed to support Anwar to become Prime Minister. Tajuddin added that he was asked to sign it as well, and there were letters addressed to Istana Negara. However, it seems like not all Pakatan Harapan leaders were aware of the alleged attempts by AMNO to prop up Anwar as the next Prime Minister. Former DAP Secretary General Lim Guan Eng has claimed to be unaware of any statutory declarations by AMNO to support Pakatan Harapan Chairperson Anwar Ibrahim as Prime Minister. When quizzed by reporters on the matter at the Kuala Lumpur Court Complex today, Lim said that he had never seen the SDs and was not the one nominated to be Prime Minister. Lim added that Pase Salak and Peter Judin Abdul Rahman's revelations are irrelevant to the problems faced by the people. 
I don't think it's relevant to the problems that the country is facing now. We are facing uh, inflation, the rising prices. Uh, so if those who are interested in fighting for their own interests, let the people see. Uh, for us, we are more focused on how to solve the uh, people's problems, how to fight corruption. Meanwhile, Amana President Mohamed Sabu said the issue was an internal UMNO matter, and he had no idea whether Tajuddin's claims were true or not. Tajuddin had made several allegations against his party's leadership in a press conference yesterday. This came following his sacking as an UMNO Supreme Council member. Among the allegations was that a number of UMNO MPs had signed SDs to support Anwar as Prime Minister in 2020. PAS has called on politicians to prioritize the well-being of the rakyat instead of arguments and focus on addressing problems such as rising prices before it gets worse. PAS has called on the government to address the issue of rising prices before things get worse. In a statement today, PAS Information Chief Kairil Nizam Kairudin said the issue could become worse if no holistic method is taken to resolve it. He also listed three suggestions from the party for Prime Minister Ismail Sabri to consider in order to overcome the problem. He said Ismail Sabri should hold discussions with party leaders from the government and the opposition to find the best possible solution to deal with the rise in the cost of living and prices. He also suggested for there to be monthly cash handouts to be distributed towards the B40 group and a segment of the M40 to buy basic daily needs. He said the government needs to collect and distribute well fairly, and the monthly cash assistance will help ease the burden of the people. Kyril also called for a special parliamentary session to discuss these issues in detail. He added that it would be best to obtain views and suggestions from other parliamentary representatives who are closer to the public in their constituencies. He said PAS also called on all political leaders to contribute their ideas and energy in the effort to help the government solve the issue. Muhammadin Ketapi has quit Bersatu. The Lahad Datu MP had joined Bersatu in November last year after leaving Parti Warisan Sabah. Lahad Datu MP Muhammadin Ketapi announced his departure from Bersatu today. At a press conference in Kota Kinabalu, he said he decided to leave Basatu as he was being sidelined. He claimed that he had been promised a role to lead the party's Lahad Datu and Sagama constituencies, but did not get it despite being with the party for six months. He added that he would now be an independent MP and would back the Sabah and federal governments. Mohammedin is both the Lahad Datu MP and Sagama assembly person. He won both seats on a Warisan ticket but left the party last year and joined Bersatu. According to Parliament's website, there are currently 32 MPs from Bersatu. With Mohammedin's departure, along with Zuraida Kamarudin and Willy Mongin, Bersatu will be left with 29 seats when the Dewan Rakyat reconvenes. And that is all from me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to MalaysiaKini.com. I'm Camilia. Thanks for watching.